I would blow the field. Wow. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> I would blow by the field. I couldn't help it. <laughs> wow. I'm sorry. Him, I, him and Brooks Kefka. <laughs> uh, it's not where I was going I with would, this, but okay. I would, you know, I would yeah, blitz geez. the field. There we go. Okay. Um, Welcome back to episode 48 of the Logger and Golf Podcast. Tuesday after the Masters. Yes. So we'd like to uh, thank everybody who came out to support us yesterday for the Monday after the Masters sell. Um, you know, bigger and better than ever. And uh, next year we're going to hopefully continue with the excitement. So I have to start off with saying, told you guys so, about Wyndham Clark. <laughs> I said, what'd I, you tell us? <laughs> I took a lot of heat for the Wyndham Clark comments last week, and I told you so. Didn't make the cut. And especially mm. what made it sweeter for me was his post Round one interview. His comments about 54 holes. Yeah, I'm not really worried about the live guys. I like my chances. You know, they only play 54 holes. Well, you, sir, played 36, so checkmate. Yeah. <laughs> and which the only tournament you've won this year was a 54-hole 54 54 event. 54-hole event, yeah. <laughs> Fair Check enough. Mate. Yeah. <clears throat> so. Hey, but he did put up a, a post yesterday about his experience at the Masters. The first comment on it, it was fantastic, was, you should have posted this on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but no real big surprise with Scheffler winning it, but how cool was it? Real quick, I want to go out and say that I'll admit I was wrong about Tiger. Yeah, he I was made honestly, it. Yeah, he surprised. He made it. He made it. I was wrong, too. He I'll made it. I right. think he we said missed a lot cut, of or sorry, we said made cut, withdraw. After round three, it looked like he was going to withdraw, though. Walking up number nine in round three, we were all texting, here it is. It's coming. He's going to walk right into the clubhouse. After that green, and even the announcers were saying on uh, PJ or on the Masters Live feature groups, like Colt Nose is like, I, I don't blame him if he packs it up right here. Yeah, he, he didn't looked, look good. I mean, he did physically did not look good at on that Saturday. moment. Now there were times where, I mean, he surprisingly looked way better physically than what I. So in the Thursday look. he looked awesome. I sent a text to my dad. I was like, Tiger looks skinny. Like he looks healthy because he doesn't look all swollen. Um, and then turn around on Friday, and you're like, oh. What did you see on the driving range when he was warming up? He had, like, five pain patches on and then put, like, <laughs> half a tub of biofreeze yeah. on his back. It was crazy. That's what they said on Saturday. It's just he had his probably worst warm-up slash stretching session ever before his round on Saturday, and he just couldn't get loose. And, you know, he was telling the amateur. Of course, in Tiger, he probably woke up at 4.30, but tells everybody he woke up at 3.30 a.m. to get warmed up. Mm -hmm. uh, just like what did he used to say he ran every day. Like six or seven miles. I don't know. <laughs> One of those things where he's the great. So you, now don't, the question, you don't really argue it. The but. question is, did Tiger pass Neil Shipley a note on the eight fairway on I Sunday? I know, right? <laughs> yeah, I was wondering the same Dude, thing. That press conference, I mean, he looked how, at the green how jacket. How awkward was oh, that? God, what happened? That, am I supposed to say anything? <laughs> that didn't happen. <laughs> He did not pass me a note. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. There's just something wrong about that kid. I think we're going to be reading about him in the news in a bad way. <laughs> oh, God, Daryl. <laughs> I mean, the, the, the side eye and uh, it just, I don't know. I'm sorry. He just looks like a stranger danger. I mean, mm. gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I will say. The Ohio State. <laughs> the. I was gonna say you reminded me a little bit of like a young uh, Jack Nicholas with like the little stockier build, you know. But okay, whatever. Young Jack hmm. Nicholas. I mean, Jack what? Nicholas was pretty stocky in like his college days. He wasn't that big. He was pretty stocky in his college days. <laughs> you say big, he says stocky. <laughs> Everybody's stocky compared to Caleb. Well, but <laughs> whatever. <laughs> the I will say that I, it was cool that he made the cut, Neil Shipley. Um, we, I think we're starting to see a trend here that pretty much guaranteed every year an amateur is going to make the cut. I mean, Sam Bennett was leading, tied for the lead after three rounds last year. We forgot about that. Um, yeah. I mean, these kids can play now. <laughs> yeah, they can. So how did you guys like the, the finish? They were like Sunday. Best golfer in the world. Proved why he's... The best golfer in the, the world. The best golfer in the world, and no one else is even close to him. That's just, I mean, I, I think I texted you because we joke all the time about you're the ball striker, but it's just, it's unreal. I think the thing that, because I'm a coach with high school right now, 
kind of talking to my kids, it's like, it doesn't have to look pretty. I said, we, we get so focused in trying to make this picture perfect swing, make it look like, no offense to Adam Scott, but make it look like this most beautiful golf swing you've ever seen. It's like, it doesn't need to, it's, you got to put the golf club on the ball. Thousand and percent. It's just got to yep. work. Yep. And what, and Scotty Scheffler says it all the time about his swing. He tries, he doesn't live in the past. He figures out where his hands are for that day and he plays it. I mean, how often do we hear, oh, I played my best golf two years ago and I want to get back to that spot? It's like, well, we're not. We're not getting back to that spot. Now, obviously, you can use videos to reference what you were doing. You know, I always try to write down my feels when I'm hitting it good. So when it goes bad, I know what I can go back to. But, I mean, Scotty Scheffler is just so damn impressive. It is. I mean, it's incredible to watch. Him and his caddy talked about the first four holes. They misclubbed, misjudged the wind the first four holes. How many players in the field would that have on Sun? Like, just, I mean, well, we saw, I mean, what, 28 guys, 30 guys missed the cut? I mean, those guys, obviously, when they miss club, they couldn't recover. But especially leading the Masters, you make birdie on three and you still miss club on four. It's how many guys would that just thrown off the rails right there? Well, didn't he didn't he lead the field in scrambling stats? So that was yes. the mo- that, and that's ultimately I mean, that's, what, that's ultimately how he won. Yeah, he was it comes sec- down to it to Masters. He was second in strokes gained off the tee, mm-hmm. and he was first in scrambling because he was like fortieth in putting and like fortieth in in, t- in uh, approach. But those small targets, you're going to miss some greens. You got to accept that you, yeah, hundred percent. You're going to have to. So if you can recover, that's where you're going to you're going to save those pars, kind of keep your momentum yeah. going. That being said, on Saturday, I thought he was going to try to throw it away. Oh, I, the entire field tried throwing it away. <laughs> At on some Saturday. point or other, yeah, every well, in Sunday too. I mean, I but, I wasn't particularly happy with the setup on Saturday, as far as the golf course goes. Yeah, I know because it it just looked like it was everybody was playing for par slash bogey. It was too short for Caleb. <laughs> It's too short for uh, Deshamba. <laughs> um, no, it was definitely it got much firmer and faster than what we're used to seeing. At, yeah, Augusta you, they play. definitely softened the greens up for some. Yeah, it's usually just. I mean, it's always firm. Don't get me wrong, but <laughs> they're like, always fast. Yeah, but they usually have just a little bit of check to them. But <clears throat> I don't want to take anything away from Scheffler because it was incredible to watch. But do we think that? There was a little bit of either folding or just not having putting pressure on Scheffler. I don't know. Ludwig did a. I was going to say there was two players in the field that played to win. Everybody else threw up all over themselves. I mean, he dunked it in the water, and but he actually kind of started laughing about it. That kid will win a major. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's unbelievable how well he hits the golf ball. If Taylor Gooch would have been there, it'd have been different. (laughs) There's an asterisk (laughs) on it. (laughs) Wow. But <laughs> this ball striker of the generation, Greg Norman. No, his iron player the last <laughs> twenty best years. Iron player, yeah. But no, I think you're. I think you're hundred percent right. I think there was a lot of players that played for other people to make mistakes around them, and for them just to manage and stay in the hunt. And then there's guys that either made a mistake and went right back at it. Yeah, I think like uh, I mean Max Homa. Honestly, I was. Um, I was. I was glad to see him play well in a major. Back to back majors with the top ten. Yeah. Um, I think he'll win one sooner or later, you know, within the next couple of years. If, but I think he got kind of too stuck in that grinding mode of where it's like I got to scramble for pars mm-hmm. and could not make the birdies that he needed to. At least he made birdie on 13 after doubling 12. On Cause Sunday. Because that was yeah. a bad break on 12. Yes, that was a bad break That on was 12. a bad break for I'm, more, I'm more specifically looking at Saturday's round. Yeah. I mean, Saturday's round what cost Max Homa a chance, a, a realistic chance. Of not making two or three birdies. Yeah. I mean, he hit the ball well enough to just yeah. didn't didn't, didn't make, make a single birdie. Well, I think that was the issue with Bryson too. Is if you watch day one, he played super aggressive the entire day. Day two, he played aggressive, but obviously the course just you know. I, he had I think really it was bad course man. Honestly, I was gonna say for Deshambo, it's the opposite. Where yeah. Homa played too conservative, yeah. Deshambo played too aggressive. Yeah, you know, and, and couldn't take his medicine at times where he needed to. Like number number two, the par five on oh my was it gosh, Saturday on where he, Saturday, you, like you hit it he right hit it where left, you can't, and then tried to hook a rope, hook a six iron around the corner to and try to hit the green, the green two left still. When it's like no, hit it all the way over by three T. I say hit a pitching wedge down there, right of the right bunker, and he chip could, on no, and make you can a, still make do a what birdie. Tiger does, like yeah. what Tiger did from the trees over there on Saturday. You rope one. Which Tiger knocked a dude out. I don't know if y'all saw the video. Smoked a guy in the face. Smoked a guy. But like, yeah, you you hit it miles right. You do not. And what did he try doing from two twenty? Hook a six iron to the green, misses it short side left, 
dunks it in the bunker. He gets up and down from there, but like, but really, he calls himself about, a you, shot there. He played the par fives terribly. Yeah, that's why he didn't win. Correct. And also, the math ain't mathing on Bryson DeChambeau. These guys were out driving him. Yeah, I was gonna say. I, I do. <laughs> he, these guys were hit, like pumping it twenty or thirty yards by him. He would occasionally catch one. In his irons, though, he's hitting like a pitching wedge from one ninety. He was so like his pitching wedge I, loft is forty one degrees though. So well, a yeah, lot, a lot but of guys like, are now. But, but like his tee shot on seventeen, he hit it a mile. Yeah, where he had was, like what what eighty six or sixty eight yards, something like that, in the in the seventeen on Saturday. But like. It, it, I don't know. There were, there were times where he hit drives. We thought, oh, he smoked, he smoked that, and he'd be 20 yards behind Max Homa. Max Homa hit a three wood by his driver on 10. Now, granted, 10, obviously, it's like. Yeah, he's slowing like, that one around the corner, though. Yeah, but also at the same time, Bryson hit driver. I mean, yeah. It's landing in a different county, and Max Homa's three wood was 40 by him. I don't know. I think that crank driver might, it was spinning. might be needing to go. Yeah. But how about his irons? Yeah. That was a storyline this week. Three D printed, and then they have bulge and roll across every face. They were ten k, like ten thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say Iron's got ten k in one. Hell yeah, sign me up. <laughs> sign me up. <laughs> uh-huh. I want to get approved on uh-huh. Tuesday. I know. Yeah. Yep. Would you be able to roll into the Masters tournament with a brand new set of irons? Well, he's already been probably playing. playing. I know he's been playing, long. but like I'm just saying, like hasn't been playing them in competition. So I, I, don't, I, don't I, think stat. I think it's a little bit over overrated to like switch and use There stat. were 3.6 million viewers on the second round and third round. That was the average of viewers, which is a 69% increase from 2023. Nice. Said it's the highest net, uh, the most round or most viewers in six years in the network's history of ESPN. Wow. So they're saying how Tiger moves the needle. Oh yeah, I mean he is the needle. Yeah, I'm just. What glad was the Sunday? See. Does it say what the Sunday it was? Doesn't say Sunday because I got a gripe with the coverage on <laughs> Sunday. Yeah, why do you do an hour commercial free on Saturday at the Masters, but you don't do it on Sunday? It makes absolutely zero sense to me. I don't. I thought it was always tradition that. They did uh, like the back nine. Rolex, yeah, yeah, one of the sponsors sponsored the entire back, and the whole back nine. When it's, once it's the leaders got there, free. it's commercial free. Because yeah. the Masters doesn't start till Sunday on the back, back nine. nine. Which thanks, Jim Nance, for which, reminding me of that every fifteen minutes. <laughs> Hello, friend. <laughs> which <laughs> it did start. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It got I, interesting. Let's, let's just say it started on nine. Yeah, I was gonna say when Morikawa made double the turning Ludwig point, and the turning point and, uh, on Sunday was number nine, and Scotty Scheffler like how. When his wedge shot went in there, also, how much of a beast is it to go driver 60 degree on nine from 470 yards? Uh, I thought Scotty Shuffler was going to make that. Like, that place would have gone wild. If well, that it ball pretty much went, went wild already, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ludwig drained a bomb from the top of the hill. Had no business making that had putt. No business. <laughs> had, had honestly no business making four from there. Yeah. But. And then you have Scotty. Pull up where his ball looked like it could have stayed up, sucked back, and almost went in the hole. Yeah, it didn't like two inches. <laughs> it's funny when he was over that ball. I was like, I, th- I think he might make this, <laughs> and then he hit it to an inch. Yeah, I, I, for some this is this is my to me for Scotty Scheffler like Tiger Woods his his like X factor like that thing that made him different was if Tiger Woods needed to make a putt he made the putt. You just mm-hmm. could always count on it. Never was an issue off the tee, right, Tiger? And and then. To me, Scotty's like his X factor kind of thing that makes him really good. I feel like when I watch Scotty play golf, he makes shots. Yeah, I would agree with that. From from sometimes maybe the most ridiculous plays ever. Any I mean, think about pressure. Think about the first Masters he won. He hold out on number three. I mean, they reminded us like thirteen or fourteen times during the broadcast. But he hold out on three. This year he chipped in on one. He chipped in on twelve. He almost hold that one on nine. He almost hold the one on fourteen on Sunday. It's like. I feel I mean, like 10, 10, the shot on 10. Yeah, like, like he he not only sticks shots, but he makes just random shots pretty regularly. Yep. I feel like. Your ball strike. Yeah. I mean, it's just just to how much pressure, how many people you have watching. I mean, it looks like that stuff isn't even bothering me. I think <clears throat> what I like about him and what a lot of young people can take a, 
kind of take the recipe of what Scotty does is you don't you can't tell if he's playing well or if he's playing bad. He's kind of even keeled through the whole process. He has his process, obviously, but really doesn't show a lot of emotion. Most emotion I've seen out of the guy is when he put both hands in the air after he won. Yeah. Well, I think, you, yeah, you bring up a good point there because he said this number one thing he's been working on this year is his mental. Yeah. I mean, he didn't – he was saying his his goal for that entire final round to not look up, to look down. He was just looking at the ground the entire day. And when he got to the shot, that's when he looked up and watched it. So, like, you know, he apologized to the fans and stuff how he wasn't, like – you know, Engaging. I mean, he had a, what, four-shot lead coming up? Or not three. He like, ended up winning by four. He ended, actually, no. So, yeah, he had a four-shot yeah. lead coming up 18. Mm-hmm. How many pros have we seen that with a four-shot lead come up that hole and they're already hat off, waving, stuff like that? He missed the green right, and he didn't do any of that because yeah. I don't think he wanted to do what he did last time he won a Masters where he four-putted. Yeah. So even though he could have four-putted to win. Oh, he could have. Yeah, he could have <laughs> six-putted. But he's he's <clears throat> insanely impressive, and I'll say back to kind of the what you were saying earlier about not trying to be perfect, perfect swing. Another buddy of mine that's an instructor up north, he put out a great post. What what does the first hole tee shots tell you about the state of golf? If you think about those players, what they're having to do on that tee ball. Uh, what, are, what, what shot are they hitting? They're having to hit the fade. It's, I, yes, they're essentially having to hit the fade. Is there is, is there any straight balls? No. Yeah, the ball moves. No. Ball always has curvature, right? Stop trying to hit the ball straight. Yeah, because when it's it, not realistic. When pushed, yeah, it's not realistic. And when when you have to get the ball in play, what are the best players in the world doing it? Curving it like thirty yards. I've got that down. <laughs> <laughs> Except they know how to do it on command. So you and me, they know how to aim for it and do it on command. But he put out a post and like he put in quotations. I just want to hit the ball straight. Yeah. And I kind of like, I texted him, I laughed at him, I said, preach, because you hear it every single lesson. Yeah. I just want to hit the ball straight. It's like, well, the ball's round. My number one player yesterday, he hit driver twice, and the two times he hit driver, he hooked it out of play. And he's like, what am I doing? And it's like, I don't, I'm not going to tell you what you're doing, because we're in the middle of a round, but what we're not going to do is hit driver anymore. And it's like, and what I want you thinking the rest of this round, how to hit a cut. You know, mm-hmm. and and... He hit it beautifully the rest of the round. He actually shot one under for the last six holes. No. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and it just goes to show you stop like trying to again think about all these swing thoughts, which calling them It just, you know, it really kind of cleared things up for me. Yeah. I need to get back to the basics of when I was a kid. It just, you know, there's a ball. Pick swing, a- yeah. Pick a target. Pick a target. Let's swing to it. Swing to it. Yeah. thousand percent. And quit worrying about what it looks like or how far my path is from the inside out. Or The worst statement I've probably ever heard is, I can hit a straight ball anywhere. It's like, well, a straight ball on number one at Augusta puts you in the left trees Mm -hmm. where you are guaranteed to make five. Well, I mean, no, I would say a straight ball gives you, you have a very narrow window to hit that fairway on number one at Augusta. You yeah. Got well, you, pretty much every <clears throat> golf course, unless your golf course is like this, every single hole. Yeah. <laughs> just running straight up and down, parallel. To I think I'm other. just going to aim at that bunker and sling is going to sling. I mean, a lot of guys hit hit <laughs> the green. You're your second shot. I mean, a lot of guys hit their, <laughs> a lot of guys hit the green from that bunker. Yeah. Yeah. Now you got to think in the past, guys were having to hit five and six iron out of that bunker. Nowadays, they're hitting eights and sevens, so yeah. it's a little easier to get over that lip. So players aren't worried about being in that bunker quite as much. Yeah. Now Rory's <laughs> lie on the second round in that bunker. I don't know how he touched the golf ball. Poor old Rory. Well, that so, was kind of that, the fun part about the Masters is this was the first time in four years where the Masters wasn't about Rory McIlroy. If you think about Saturday coverage, Sunday coverage. They didn't coverage, have a lot of lead up on them at all. They really didn't year. talk about them much, which well, was fun. Well, he didn't give them access. Yeah. Well, Rory, honestly, Rory played him, two man. practice rounds by himself. <clears throat> like, he stormed out of the his press conference. Like, they, he couldn't get, get out of there fast enough. So, you could tell he was trying to focus, exclude himself, I would Are say. Are we ready from, to talk about that news? No, not yet. I was okay. going to say, let's bring it up. So, let's – our. What is going on with Rory? Do we think he's going to win another major? It's ten years, guys. Well, I think it's been he, ten years. I think 
I, I had to look back on my text to remember, but I was talking about like Colin Mark Howard and uh, Xander and Rory, I think even fits in the same boat. I was like, they couldn't close a cookie jar, <laughs> as was the quote that I, I sent <laughs> I sent everybody in the text. Because if you think of Xander and you think of Rory, mm-hmm. they have some of the best Saturday rounds in major championships, period. Xander so, did play well this week. Yeah. But he gets to Sunday, just like Colin, and I know Rory wasn't, and fall apart. Colin yeah. did. Ha, Colin has kind of lost his game the last year yeah. and a half, so he wasn't expected to be up there. So Rory now with the expectation of, oh, well, if you don't do this year, career's not complete, I, he should ignore that because that's irrelevant. But Golf's hard. Yeah, golf's hard. But it's like he's putting so much, I mean, with the news that we're going to talk about here in a minute, he's put so much pressure on himself the last two years that, honestly, I don't think this Masters, he, and he probably would never say this, even meant anything to him. Um, I think it was more or less seeing what he could do with where his game's currently at. Obviously, he went and worked with Butch Harmon a few weeks ago, but I think this was just trying to kickstart his major season. I don't think that, not that you think of the Masters as irrelevant, but for mm. him, I just don't think he went into it with the same. Uh, well, we're going back to Valhalla. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, honestly, I mean, it meant something to him. Yeah. But I, it just realistically was his, he, he's not in a spot with his game right now. Yeah. To, he birdied eight and nine on Sunday, <clears> and I think it got him up to like, 11th place, and I was like, God, I was like, here we go, we back backdoor, backdoor top ten, back door top ten, where you had no chance of winning this tournament, and yet you're going to finish in the top ten, and then obviously the back nine, you know, essentially was like, ah, I got you, like, <laughs> <laughs> but I I do think that he's playing really well, um, he's driving the ball unbelievably. His problem right now is his irons. Mm-hmm. I mean, they said he's been averaging 67, what, percent, 67% of greens this year in regulation. Now, a lot of players don't look at that stat anymore because it's a little skewed because you could hit one on the fringe and the, it, the, that it, they don't count it. But um, he was, like, only hitting, like, 32% of the greens and still made the cut. So it shows that, like, the other parts of his game is strong. Yeah. Putting's not an issue really right now. He's kind of starting to own that. It's just like he just can't get it all pieced together. Well, on Saturday, time. the stat that he, Rory McIlroy this year is more accurate from 210 yards with a six iron than 110 with a wedge. Yep, yeah, you can't 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 do, can't, can't do that. Sounds can't. like somebody else I know. Who? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm just making that up. Oh, I was gonna say. I was, I was gonna say who? Who do we know that's 210 yards out? It's pretty accurate. <laughs> Golf courses ain't long enough around here to have that kind of No. Job. Now, what news? <laughs> <laughs> Drive a wedge. Drive a wedge. Uh. Hey, that's pretty much what Augusta was when they told Scotty to go through his holes, explain the birdies and the bogeys, which I think it's awesome that they do for the champion every year for that. He was like, driver four iron, driver four iron, driver lob wedge, driver lob wedge, driver four iron, four iron, three iron, lob wedge. So it's like, that's a Seven iron, I don't think got touched. <laughs> Maybe then twelve. No, probably. Middle, no, yeah, he had pitch no, yeah, on twelve. I was say middle of the bag didn't get touched. <laughs> but <clears throat> leading to Rory news. Yeah. What, what do we was, got? What you got? Uh, Eight hundred fifty million dollar offer on the table from Liv and uh, ownership stake uh, of a team. Is this an official offer, or is this just kind of from the reports I got? Says that it's official offer on the table. Yeah, Flushing it put out the post yesterday, and every player that Flushing it's posted has signed with Liv. They yeah. haven't got one person wrong yet. Well, I did see the source that they got it from is one of the largest finance papers in the UK. Yeah. So, and where does Piff run their business out of? The UK. So, I don't blame him. He got hung out to dry by Jay Monahan, and now he's got a chance to. Uh, generational wealth. So, yeah. Thank you. I'll take it. I mean, he already had a hundred million dollar contract from Taylor Made. I know. That's not eight hundred and fifty million. That's not eight hundred and fifty million. Why do you want a million when you can have a b- b- billion? Yeah. <laughs> now, but he's also co owner in the TGL league. So here's my take on it. I think we've we have already said that Rory going to live is inevitable now. It's after like what Thanos happened. Huh? Inevitable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um <laughs> After last year and what happened with the merger coming out of nowhere, stuff like that. Mm. Here's my thing. I think the TGL League, they already have teams made, right? I think that's how the PGA Tour and the Live are going to join together and how it's going to work is when 
They go play on Liv. Liv fully goes into the team aspect. They don't do anything individual. You still just do individual tournaments on the PGA Tour. So, like, all the teams that are already made for the TGL, which already have names that are equally as bad as Liv's. And logos. And logos. They can just go in the Liv event and play as a team format. And boom. And you can play all around the world. At least we got range goats. We got one good logo, one good color, logo. one good name. Yep. <laughs> um, but I, I'm I'm not surprised to see Rory go if he does. Yeah. Is he playing this week in the elevated event at Hilton Head? And I'm not sure. I know Victor ain't. Well, and there's also reports that Victor. Yeah, I mean he's been pretty pissy in general about the whole thing. So yeah, it wouldn't shock me, especially with where his game's at. I'm taking the 400 million. Your phone's vibrating. That's not important. <laughs> Um, but I, I definitely think that I'm still going to call him a hypocrite if he goes. What? I, I mean, uh, yeah, he is. I mean, he, he was just right there next to Jay Monahan oh, when they brought up the 9 11. That's, that's all I can sit here and think is like how, how big of a stink Rory this whole time has put on. He's going to lose and, his entire fan base. And I mean, he has made his entire platform and stance as live is terrible. What did he say? For, what did he say on the Netflix? Well, he's been back F pedaling live the Netflix. lately. The Netflix. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> the Netflix full swing. Mm. We had a late night last night and an early morning. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's been doing a lot of backpedaling lately. I mean, in his interviews and stuff. Oh yeah, he's, talking his, about, his whole know, tune has changed about live you know, for sure. Golf needs a, a merger. I think is the last I've heard. Um, apparently, he had an interesting or an interested spectator at Augusta as well, well too. Who? Roy did. Who was following him? Greg Norman. Oh, wearing his golf <laughs> shoes, too. Yeah. <laughs> now, you guys have been to Augusta, right? I have not. You haven't been to the Masters? No, Kyle has. Okay. Were you guys wearing golf shoes? No. Were he wearing golf shoes? No. <laughs> Greg, there's a photo of Greg Norman, like, leading, like, like there's a bunch of patrons following him. He's wearing Foot Joy tradition, or premieres. <laughs> no way. <laughs> yeah, blacked out. <laughs> I was like, man, that's, you just give him a bag, give him a club, let him tee it up. Let but, him, let I him mean, relive whole 10. <laughs> he, he had to buy, he had to purchase his tickets. He didn't get his tickets provided or anything like Second that. Hand. It doesn't, so he, he purchased tickets, and then on Thursday he chose to follow Roy McElroy. Yeah, he's going. Well, good on Freddie. Did you see what Fred Couples offered him? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> bam, bam. A, he said he's going to get his back fixed so he can make the cut next year and play better. But B, he said, I'll give you tickets anytime. Yeah, just ask me. Just <laughs> ask me. But I'll say, I, 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 think, I think Rory eventually goes to live, and it's going to be quite hilarious when it, when it happens. Yeah. The amount of memes that are going to be made are going to mm. be fantastic. Yeah, because obviously there's going to be a shakeup. We're already hearing from local events, things like that, that they don't have sponsors guaranteed for next year, and they don't even have dates guaranteed. It's like the Wells Fargo, for instance. This is the last year it's the Wells Fargo. They don't have anything lined up for next year, so mm. is the Wells Fargo even, or is Quail Hollow's tournament even happening? Don't know. <laughs> now, I don't think they'll take that course off any rotation. I mean, it's a popular non-elevated event that players always come to and show up for. So I guess we'll find out. I think it's time for the LGC Invitational. <laughs> <laughs> well, awesome. So we got show and tell today. Yep. Perfect. All right. So Flushing It Golf says Ludwig Ober, his name changes every week, since turning pro, 23 starts, two wins, 11 top tens, Ryder Cup win, second in the Masters on his major debut. The only one I Kyle's, got wrong was Tony Finau. Uh, he folded like a lawn chair. So <laughs> it's it's difficult for top uh, or like his ankle. When is when are we going to see him use a long putter or any putter but that one? <sighs> um, it's difficult, but it says it's difficult for top amateurs to live up to the hype in the pro ranks. But Ludwig is exceeding it. So impressive. I mean, goes without saying. If yeah. you don't if you don't know who Ludwig is, you do now. You do now. Yeah. yeah. And don't be surprised when he's up there. I mean, his golf swing's so simple too. Like yeah. you look at it, and you're like, man, what can go wrong? Does he win a major this year? This year, I don't think so. I mean, I think I'm not going to put open, it past him. Yeah, I mean, I like, he didn't, he didn't, He's got a fair shot. He at. didn't play any golf that showed that he played to lose the Masters. Mm -hmm. Like other than eleven, that's the only hole he made a mistake. Yeah, he just made 
one bad swing there. Yeah. I just think that Scotty proves why. I mean, when you make seven birdies in the final round, you're light years ahead of everybody. Well, he's kind of like turned some attention on Sweden, too. It's like Sweden, it seems like, has become a golf mecca. I mean, all the collegiate golfers that I work with that seem to be growing in rank are all from Sweden. Well, th- well think about yeah. in the female, in, in the women's game right yep. now. A lot of big-name players coming out of Sweden for that. So, What do you attribute that to, though? They have a hell of a golf program over there. I think that's still Annika. Huh? I think that's still sure. Annika. Yeah. yeah. That's the effects yeah. of Annika's I mean, career, quite honestly. That's a trickle-down effect, yeah. Yeah. So it's been cool. I wouldn't – I'm going to say, you know what, screw it. Why not? It's a dark horse. I do think he'll win a major this yeah, year. Yeah, I think Open Championship. I don't know. I, I just feel like if that's the one he's going to win this year, that would be the one. I could also see Valhalla. Where's the Valhalla Open at this year? Is it at Liver- June? Uh – I'm not sure. Off the top of my head. The, uh, the U.S. Open's at Pinehurst. He's a great yeah. iron player. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> Pinehurst, I mean, that, he could take his game. He's already proven now in his short career that he could, his game goes everywhere. Yeah. So. Yeah. Could you win the Masters if you got to start each hole on the green? Okay, so there's contests because I've listened to this video. <laughs> this has been an it's, age-old question. So, so, could you win the Masters if you got to start each hole on the green? And scoring is still the exact same, but you're starting on the furthest point of the green to where the pin is. I'll let you guys answer before I tell you my answer. <laughs> no. I would blow the field. If that's, I got to start on the green? Wow. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I would blow by the field. I couldn't help it. <laughs> wow. I'm sorry. Him, I, him and Brooks Kefka. <laughs> uh, it's not where I was going I would, with this, but okay. I would, I would yeah, blitz geez. the field. There we go. Okay. Um, you want to know why? He's going to be up there with Brooks Kepka now. No. Even, stroking eyes. even par, if you're starting on the green, is four putts per hole. I'm not four putting a single par five. Heck, I would guarantee I'd probably two putt a few of the par fives. Number twelve, I ain't four putting. That's the smallest green on the. Like, there's a lot of small greens, so you got to think you're gonna as a if you're a decent putter and you're starting on the green, you might have a few four putts throughout the course of a seventy-two hole tournament, but you're gonna have way more two and three putts that are guaranteed birdies and pars. You're gonna end up in some spots where like it's like it's not a possible two putt. I no, think, I agree, know, but um, a three and four putt. Right. Like. I think what this is saying for the for our listeners, our average consumer playing, not us as professionals, they would not do very well. No, so that's why I said so fast. Yeah. From, from, yeah. My brother texted and said, he goes, top ten. Top ten. <laughs> <laughs> Bless his heart. He put it good, I've man. seen his putt. <laughs> I was, was going to say, I've seen his putt, but... <laughs> I haven't played with Sebi in a long time. <laughs> no, I'm gonna be no. You can 100. percent I would I would take anybody at this table and drop them on a green out there, and say you can get this down in three putts. Pretty much on every single green. I was trying to get a draw with a putter. It really helps with speed control. I mean, number three, there you might could have a tough time on three. If you're starting from the front right to the back left. Pin. Yeah. Number four could be difficult. Five could be tough. Four putts. Sixteen I, works I know. perfect for Caleb. You could hook that putt right <laughs> oh, in there. Trust me, I'd hook the hell out of that putt. <laughs> um, number number two, you're probably making an eagle. <clears throat> oh, yeah. I think or, you're, sorry, a double eagle. You're, you're three putting for an eagle. You're three putting for an eagle at, at worst. worst. So, like, that's what I'm saying, yeah. like. I say number We're one. We're not big math people, but I'm doing the math yeah, here. Number I'm one, there's like, not enough. I'm beating crazy eleven spots under. where you shouldn't <laughs> more than two or at the worst three putt there for a, for a birdie. Number eight's guaranteed probably two or three putt. Yeah, nine you might could get in a difficult spot. Like nine, you might. Are if you're putting, not careful. Are they putting the pin up front or the pin up top? If the pin's up front <laughs> and you're on the back, you might have a hundred yard shot for your for your second shot. I number mean, if you're, if you're not number, careful, number you know? three is where it could get out of hand. Three would be difficult. <laughs> Uh, 10, 11, 12, nothing really there. 13. That's a, that's a 14 two could, could turn tricky. But I, but where the 14 pin is, you just throw it up behind this pin and it comes back to it and the ball <clears> from the front of the green. Not if it's the, the back left pin placement. Well, they're going to do it Sunday. Sunday. 
Is that well, well, I guess it's over the course of four rounds. Nine, so sorry. Nine yeah. would be You're tough. Right. Yeah. It's over the course of four rounds. That's why I say nine would be really hard. Yeah. Nine would be really tough. I think if it was a one-round shootout. One-round shootout, you ain't going to get beat, I don't you, think. No, I'm saying over the course of a tournament, I think it pretty much if if you're a decent putter, you're going to win. As I say, there's only a handful over of holes. Over one that are, round, you can have really a six gonna, putt that. Yeah, there's only there's only a handful of holes that are going to really, really test you, I think. And I, to the members at Augusta, can we uh, test this theory, yeah, please? Yep. Let's give it a try. <laughs> yeah, we'll happily. We'll happily <laughs> test this theory. Now, if the greens are like Saturday, it's a different Saturday, story. Saturday, it might be different. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that round was not going to be pretty. But I've seen a lot of – I've seen this post come up a bunch, and, like, there's been people that have just, like – like, one guy commented, one professional golfer, he goes, he goes, stop with this stuff. Yes, you would win. When you start on the green, you're going to have some crazy things happen. You don't realize that when you can pretty much three-putt any hole out there. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was just thinking of Ernie L's five putting oh, from no. three feet. No, no, I think he's well. <laughs> yeah, he five putted, five, yeah. but it was a total of six, six, seven putts. It was seven. I think it was seven. I those five for six total putts. I saw putts. a highlight of well, it somewhere yeah. this Guys, week. If you have the yips, you don't have a chance any round of golf. I'm gonna tell you something. <laughs> I, I've I've witnessed a seven putt in competition, playing with somebody in a NC Open one year, oh, and um, seven putted. Let me tell you something. If you've if you've ever witnessed somebody seven putt. <laughs> So give you painful new, new appreciation. Huh? I know, it, like you feel for them. Quite yeah. honestly, like it's, <laughs> it's a heart. very emotional time. <laughs> you know, go up and give like, a hug. you think about like what it takes to go through seven putts on a grade, right? Like the first putt, you're like oh, I'm making this. You know, no, no problem. Then you run it by. That's 10. why you seven putt because if you're mostly thinking about like, making your first you're, putt, you run it by ten feet, and you're like, oh no, I, I just did that. Like ah, oh, well, I'll, I'll make this one. It's no big deal. And then then you run that one by. You know, and then and then you like, you're like, ooh, I got to be a little careful here, and you, you don't quite make that. <laughs> now you've three, now you haven't made it in three putts. You're frustrated, so you slap one. Oh no, I've, now I've got six feet again, and you just keep doing that. It, it's emotional. There's right. a lot. It's a it's a roller coaster of emotion. And then it gets really <laughs> awkward and silent because you don't know whether to say. And it gets dark too. <laughs> you're like, dark, man. Hey, what what did you make there? <laughs> <laughs> what, what was that? I just need to confirm. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing my PGA I live scoring. What was that? <laughs> I'm gonna put the phone down. Yeah, like, <laughs> well, uh, you know what? We'll figure it out when we get. I just the usually, house. usually in those situations, I keep my head on a swivel for like a tomahawk yeah, or something. Yeah, like, you know, just like <laughs> it's, uh, it's tough. It's like, whoa, what's going to go on here? It's tough. So, oh, don't Dude. don't worry. I I've been in that situation plenty of times in tournaments where you don't want to like. I wait till the end of the round. Like, hey, I just want to confirm what you made there on twelve. Yeah. <laughs> Since yeah. we let a few holes go by, <laughs> digress. Shooting match play. What'd you make there? <laughs> I mean, yeah. match play doesn't matter. Match play, I'm going to tell you to pick it up after yeah. five. That's yeah. good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you ain't got a chance to pick it up. I'm going to make sure the next hole you are guaranteed not to two putt. Yeah. <laughs> well, awesome. Well, thanks for guys listening to episode 48 here. We did launch our latest episode of the Driver Bracket Challenge, uh, so be sure to click over and watch that. And Final uh, episode of round one, right? Yep. Yep. Perfect. So, and then round two's coming. Round two's coming up right around the corner. So. Cool. Yeah, so we'll send up. If you have those notifications on, you'll find out. Yeah, so top right corner, push bell notifications. Like and subscribe, and we'll see you next week.